How green is Canada? Well, you know, it's Canada, so it must be pretty green, right? Well, in actuality, we, we suck. We actually really, really, really suck. We actually really suck when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions, or GHG for short. Now, this includes carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and other gases. And this has made Canada consistently one of the worst emitters per capita in the world. And in this new age of climate awareness, this is not a good look. Let's now do a deeper dive into Canada's emissions. Let's find out why is Canada such a heavy polluter, where this pollution is concentrated, and can Canada actually achieve its ambitious climate goals that were set in the Paris Climate Accords. Let's first begin by understanding where Canada sits in international greenhouse emissions. The following graph depicts the top 10 emitters of GHG, carbon dioxide equivalent, in megatons in 2019. Now the carbon dioxide equivalent thing simply means that other GHG gases such as methane and nitrous oxide are converted to the equivalent amount of carbon dioxide with the same global warming potential. Simply put, methane and nitrous oxide and other gases are simply converted into carbon dioxide. For the rest of this video, all measurements of emissions will be in GHG and carbon dioxide equivalents. The candidates on this list are not very surprising. They are either some of the most populous nations in the world, such as China, India, and America, or have very developed economies, such as Japan, Canada, and Germany. We can also see that Canada is in fact number 10th in the world in terms of GHG emissions, well below first place China and second place America. By solely looking at this graph, one can make the conclusion that Canada is not that bad. I mean, Canada's emissions are only about 6% of China's and only about 12% of America's. Let's now look at a second graph, this time showing GHG emissions per capita, meaning the total emissions of the country divided by the total population. Looking only at the top emitters we saw previously, we notice that Canada actually comes in first place in this list. This means that Canada, along with America, are some of the worst emitters in the world per person. Canada, however, is not the worst in the world in regards to this metric. This status goes to the small Gulf countries such as Kuwait and Qatar, as well as tiny Brunei on the island of Borneo. China is only 7th on this list. China and India's large emissions are based on their massive populations, making their emissions per capita significantly less than Canada and America. Another interesting point is the European countries, which have a development level on par with Canada, but has significantly lower emissions per person. And if we add other nations such as the UK, France and Italy, they all find themselves with emissions per capita between 6 and 7 tons, much less than Canada's 19.56 tons. However, this can be somewhat explained by their larger populations. Germany's emissions, for example, are almost the same as Canada's. However, Germany is more than twice as populated as Canada, explaining why Germany's per capita emissions are also half of Canada's. However, this still indicates that German citizens, or European citizens in general, are much less polluting than Canadian citizens. So this leaves us with an important question. What exactly is going on in Canada? I mean, why are GHG emissions per capita so high compared to the rest of the world? Well, let's now discover where these emissions are actually coming from. Based on the Government of Canada's environmental statistics, GHG emissions can be divided into the following sectors. Oil and gas with 28% of all emissions. Transport such as cars, trucks, trains and planes at 25%. Buildings at 12%, which is all emissions generated by commercial and residential buildings like heating. Next we have heavy industry at 10% agriculture at 9%, electricity generation at 8%, and finally we have waste and others at 7% of all emissions. We can see with this graph that 203 megatons of GHGs 
or 28% of all emissions in Canada are generated by the oil and gas industry. Remember that Canada is often in the top five oil producing nations in the world. This is in large part the main reason why Canada's emissions per capita are so high compared to similarly developed countries such as Germany. Germany has a negligible oil and gas industry. Eliminate the 203 megatons produced by this sector and already Canada finds itself with GHG emissions per capita at 14 tons per person, a reduction of 5.5 tons. Let's now further break up the oil and gas sector. We can notice that the oil sands represent 83 megatons or 41% of the emissions produced by the oil and gas sector. This 83 megatons produced by the oil sands is therefore responsible for 11% of Canada's total GHG emissions in 2019. This is more emissions than the entire heavy industry sector. It is actually quite alarming to see at what extent this activity is polluting. I mean, as Canadians, we often hear about the environmentally destructive nature of the oil sands. However, I do think that it is heavily downplayed and kept ambiguous in order to keep the oil dependent economy of a certain province. And I don't think I need to name which province that is. Jokes aside though, Canada as a whole is very dependent on the oil sector as it does bring in billions of dollars in revenue that is later redistributed throughout the nation in various ways. It is difficult to just stop without having some serious economic consequences. Anyways, let's now return to the chart. Natural gas extraction is also a surprisingly large industry in Canada. It is often overshadowed by its more famous brother, the oil sands, but nonetheless creates 55 megatons of GHG emissions annually, only 28 megatons less than the oil sands. Most of this natural gas extraction also occurs in Alberta. British Columbia and Saskatchewan also produce large quantities. To finish up this graph, Conventional oil, oil produced by traditional wells, represents 17% of emissions from the oil and gas sector. And finally, we have the other emissions that are related to oil and gas extractions with 15%. It is now obvious that the oil sector is a key reason why Canada's emissions and emissions per capita are so high. Let's now take a look at Canada's second most emitting sector, transportation. Now before bringing out the chart, I want to clarify certain elements. Canada is a massive country, second largest on earth, and bringing or transporting goods and people from the east coast to the west coast for 5,000 kilometers will require a massive amount of energy no matter what. And creating a transportation network of this size is expensive. Not to mention that Canada is very sparsely populated, making a return on investment essentially non-existent. Now these conditions are the exact opposite of European countries. Let's take Germany for an example. Germany is a relatively small country, 357,000 square kilometers, with a population of 83 million. This makes Germany quite a dense country. So building transportation networks throughout the nation is far easier due to the reduced length and can even be a profitable investment for a corporation or a government. With this in mind, let's now pull out the chart. We can see that freight, heavy duty trucks or semis or 18 wheelers or whatever you want to call them tops the list with 65 megatons of GHG emissions, or 35% of the transportation sector. Take that 65 megatons and divide it by the total emissions of 738 megatons, and we get 9%. That means that 9% of all Canadian emissions are produced by heavy duty trucks transporting goods around the country. Next up on the chart, we have passenger light trucks. So pickups and small delivery trucks and also passenger cars representing 55 and 34 megatons of GHG emissions respectively, together making up 12% of all Canadian emissions. Unless you live in a big city such as Toronto, Montreal or Vancouver, public transportation is very limited 
or it can even be non-existent. Even biking infrastructure is still in its infancy in Canada and is limited to the center of the larger cities. So if people need to get around the city being their only option, they will take their car. And if you add the fact that most Canadian cities are very suburban with massive sprawls also forces citizens to take their cars as the public transportation does not reach them. This means large and frequent emissions for everyday activities. Transportation is thus another main reason why Canada's GHG emissions per capita are so high. Let's now compare the Canadian reality with a European country. We're going to take Germany again just for easiness. Germans have many different alternatives when it comes to transportation. People are definitely not forced to take their cars. German cities also tend to be a lot more denser with mixed zoning combining both residential and commercial spaces. This makes commute times a lot shorter plus public transportation is actually developed. So citizens have the choice between biking, buses, trains, and get this, even walking. Cars are actually taking the sideline in Europe, while in Canada, the movement is lagging behind. All right, so now we have broken down Canada's two main sources of emissions, oil and gas and transportation. Together, these two account for 53% of all emissions in Canada. These two represent the discrepancy between Canada and similarly developed nations in Europe and also explains in large part Canada's disproportionate share of global emissions. The other sources of emissions are more or less typical sources of emissions for countries such as buildings, heavy industry and agriculture. The last sector I want to break down briefly is the electricity sector. This is an area where Canada is actually doing well. If we look at this chart showing Canadian electric production, we can notice that 60% is created through hydro, 15% is created through nuclear, 11% is natural gas, 7% is coal, a surprising 5% is produced with wind turbines, and the remaining 2% is created through biomass and other sources. This effectively means that around 80% of electricity produced in Canada does not produce any GHG emissions. The 62 megatons of GHG emissions produced by the electricity sector are generated by the natural gas and coal power plants, even though they make up only 18% of the electricity production, making them responsible for 8% of Canada's total emissions. This also means that electric vehicles would in large reduce emissions in Canada as the electricity consumed by these vehicles is 80% produced from green sources if you count nuclear as being green. Alright, so that's enough with grass. Let's now visualize a map of emissions generated per province. We can now see which provinces contribute the most and least to Canadian GHG emissions. The darker the red, the higher the province's emissions. Alberta, not surprisingly, is in first place with 257 megatons of GHG equivalent. In fact, Ontario in second place only produces 58% the emissions of Alberta, with 150 megatons of GHG, despite having a population 66% larger than Alberta. This reality is of course the result of the concentration of the oil and gas sector in Alberta. In third place we have Quebec with 76 megatons. In fourth place we have Saskatchewan with 66 megatons. Saskatchewan is also a large oil and gas producer. This explains its disproportionate emissions despite only having a population of just over 1.1 million people. Fifth place British Columbia for example has a population of over 5 million people and has smaller emissions than Saskatchewan with 62 megatons. These top 5 emitters I just mentioned together released 91% of Canada's GHG emissions in 2020. So is Canada on track to meet its ambitious Paris Agreement goals? No, it's not even close like really not even close. In 2015, Canada pledged to reduce emissions by 40 to 45% by the year 2030. 
That's in less than eight years from this recording. Canada has chosen 2005 as a base year in order to measure its progress. Canada's base year is therefore 741 megatons of GHG equivalent. Remember that in 2019, emissions had reached 738 megatons of GHG. That's not really a reduction at all. In fact, it's a reduction of 0.4%, a laughable amount. Remember, there is eight years left. To be fair, Canada has at least managed to curb its emissions despite our growing population. But there is still a lot of work to be done on this front. Canada is quite frankly lagging behind when it comes to climate change. It's as simple as that. We are not doing what we need to be doing. And Canada often sees itself as a leader on the international stage. Um, but in terms of climate change, we are actually one of the worst countries in the world. So that is all for today's video. I hope you've learned something new about Canada's GHG emissions and GHG emissions per capita and how much Canada actually contributes to global warming, etc. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and even subscribing to the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao, guys.